Hi there, guys. God bless you. And uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, got a uh, article wanting to look at with everything being discussed at the moment with the red heifers and Israel and uh, the like. So uh, wanting to have a little look at that. We've been looking at Australia and Canada and China and uh, obviously over here in the UK and uh, only right at this particular time that we uh, you know keep our focus and our gaze uh, upon Israel. So we're going to be looking at the red heifers uh, and uh, the return of Christ in a moment going to be uh, going to Psalm 150 uh, and then the article itself quite a lot in there which is really good for us to be looking at um, and then some clips in relation to this some updates and perhaps some other sort of like things to be considered relating to the uh, red heifers and ultimately for us as uh, you know this is an important week uh, that we celebrate uh, looking forward to the resurrection Sunday and celebrating that but everything for us is about the lord jesus and uh so we're going to be sort of like keeping a real focus on him and then there's a music sort of like video compilation thing uh for us just to really focus uh on the lord uh as we sort of like you know finish up with here so without further ado guys bless you here we go let's bounce to psalm uh 150 and uh, this was the verse for the live and so here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. And praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing and praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals and praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. There was that song, isn't it? Let everything have breath. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I don't know if any of you remember sort of like Ishmael and the Glory Company. Do you know what I mean? It was just like when, we, when I was young and growing up and you were in Sunday school and that was that was it, you know, praise the Lord. And it was really amazing, isn't it, how sort of like songs have changed, worship's changed. Um, just sort of like, you know, just old school, real innocence, just like praising the Lord for everything, you know. And so uh, absolutely right that we start with uh, Psalm 150. Hi there, Annie. God bless you. Yeah, happy resurrection weekend. Beautiful family. Absolutely, absolutely all eyes on the Lord and just really grateful for everything that he is, you know, sort of like doing everything that he has done and everything that we've got to look forward to. It is all about the Lord. Hi there, Sherry. Good to see you. Everyone checking all in and saying good morning to Falk, uh, which is really good. Hi there, Daniel. Great to see you. Bless you, buddy. Hi there, Jonathan. Good morning. Good to see you guys with us as well. Y'all rocking all in. Got a few clips for us to be sort of flowing through today. And yeah, Annie, absolutely. Jesus is the reason for the season. The, you know, tragedy that, that still is that they haven't woken up just yet seeing the convergence of all of this rumoring around uh, third temples things being lined up prophetically as well as obviously you know the three and a half years where the lord mercifully you know has a place uh, set aside for uh his people his chosen people you know keeping his covenant with them in petra and providing for them miraculously again so no doubt they'll have to get used to some form of manner again no doubt and so yeah all eyes on israel with what's going on uh, a few clips here that literally could see a fuses or two being uh, lit and it could be our departure uh, literally so exciting times for us as the bride uh sad of times as well that that they think that a sacrifice and they're still resorting to the law do not understand the finished and complete work of the lord jesus christ on the cross uh really sad hi there share good to see you great to have you with us good to have you uh all guys oh bless you guys you're all awesome yeah everything's falling into place uh it is isn't it hi there rika good to see you blessings 
uh, to you. Yeah, everything is literally falling into place. Um, prophetically, uh, peace speaking, is it not? Israel and the proxies. And we're looking at, you know, Damascus also taking a few hits as well. And then uh, relations between Israel and Russia are sort of like melting down as they're starting to impose their presence more along Israel's borders and fly zones and on the Golan Heights, as well as uh, articles coming out today on our telecom channel, guys, where you've got now uh, Russian warships that are in the Red Sea, sort of like countering the sort of like coalition's pres presence there. And so similar things like brewing as well with Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38, 39, all of these things being formed only have to be remembering of what's happening with BRICS, the uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa and the others, Saudi Arabia, India also wanting to perhaps come on board and just the monetary system and clout that this, you know, has and the opposition to the dollar and how that's going to have a massive impact. And so seeing a coalition of these in sort of, you know, economic terms, you know, grassrooted from the Abraham a cause and so interesting things that we're seeing being brewed up on the stage as Israel is literally now you know batting against international pressure for a ceasefire all the while being more isolated all the while more fulfilling prophecy so that there isn't a nation that comes in and saves the day it's the Lord that comes in and intervenes and divinely intervenes and consequently you know a, a multitude are brought to him because of that and so no one's going to be stealing the lord's glory no one's going to be stealing his thunder any of these sort of like intentions from you know hamas or hezbollah and these other proxies aren't ever going to become to fruition and we're going to be seeing the lord literally sort of not being too pleased when it comes to this imposition relating to the two-state solution and uh you know all of the islamic states around are obviously not too happy relating to the red heifer and uh rumors and let's just say that they were rumors uh relating to that being the reason why they actually wanted to invade got some spokesmen coming out and saying that but really it was a bit of a false flag event for me personally all to impose uh, the two-state solution all to literally wage war on god and poke him in the eye as well and jerusalem being the apple of god's eye and so the taunting of everything and the partitioning of dividing the land there are consequences to that and so seeing isaiah 17 1 damascus literally having a lot more focus militarily in and around that area and the golan heights and the sort of joint uh, patrols with uh, Israel, I thought Israel, Syria and uh, Russia, very alarming times. So we've got some clips uh, for us to be looking at here. Hi, Paula, good to see you. Okay, so let's go to the, I'm trying to think which clips to, to, to start us off with. Um, now, man, let's ditch the clips, let's ditch the clips. Let's, just, let's, get him, let's get the boring stuff out of the way first. Let's just cover the article. <laughs> To get the boring stuff out of the way okay not boring that, that was wrong but you know what i mean anyway red heifer and the return of christ uh obviously the first part of that might be boring but the second bit definitely not here we go we are witnessing biblical prophecy unfolding right before our very eyes yet far too many christians remain oblivious to its significance the red heifer a seemingly mundane aspect of ancient jewish faith is emerging it's emerging as a pivotal symbol in the prophetic timeline while its significance may sound obscure to some it holds profound implications for believers attuned to the signs of the times it's crucial to clarify absolutely that christians do not believe the sacrifice of a red heifer can absolve sins amen jesus's sacrifice alone holds that power amen However, according to biblical prophecy, the ceremonial sacrifice of a red heifer in Israel is a precursor to significant end time events. The imminent sacrifice of a red heifer is not merely a religious ritual. It carries profound eschatological implications. According to the Bible, the ashes of a red heifer are used in purification rituals to consecrate the Jewish people, their priests, and the temple. This event 
expected to occur soon in Israel will undoubtedly have global ramifications, potentially live streamed for the world to witness. I uh, very much doubt that that will be live. Four Red Heifers currently meets the qualifying uh, for this sacred ceremony, and they are being held in an undisclosed location, blah, 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 blah. Scripture provides insights into the significance of these events. In Daniel 9, 27, a verse often associated with the Great Tribulation, it is prophesied that sacrifices and offerings will cease. This implies the existence of a third temple in which these rituals can occur, paralleling, paralleling the practices that took place in ancient Israel, the emergence of red heifers and preparations for their sacrifice in Israel align with these prophetic markers and lead to a resumption of temple practices. Uh, yeah, they've got the Temple Institute there, haven't they, still with all of the trimmings all done, the altars already been dedicated. Okay, so uh, let's have a little bounce over to some clips and uh, show you uh, just some things that people are saying around the red peppers and a uh, bit of humour thrown in, why not? The coming of a red heifer is the most holy sign in all of Judaism. It signals the beginning of the end. It is not just our religion, but Islam and Christianity as well. They all agree on one thing, that the red heifer means the end of times. The altar already awaits where the heifers are to be burned. According to some believers, the ceremony needs to be performed right here on the Mount of Olives, looking directly into where the temple once stood. At a secure, undisclosed location are these red heifers, to be precise. Some Jews and Christians believe they're the key to rebuilding the historic Jewish temple in Jerusalem and to beckoning the Messiah. To understand, you have to go back nearly 2,000 years when the ancient Romans destroyed the last temple in the city to rebuild it, these believers point to the Bible's Book of Numbers. It commands the Israelites to sacrifice a red heifer without defect or blemish, and that has never been under a yoke. Only then can the temple rise again. Caring for them on an Israeli settlement in the West Bank is Yitzhak Mamo. So we have here, uh, after a long research, we find in uh, Texas, in Texas. Uh, yeah, yeah, Texas, United States of America. Texas Red Angus flying them 7,000 miles to Israel. This is not a publicity stunt. What, what do you mean? Meaning, this is something you take very seriously. Harry Potter is a good story. The Bible is not story. The Bible is a way of God to lead us. They have built the altar on the Mount of Olives and hummus. one of the major reasons that they attacked Israel in October was because of the red heifers, because the Dome of the Rock sits on the Temple Mount right now. And by doing this sacrifice of the red heifers, it is an all out threat of being like, we're going to get rid of the Dome of the Rock and rebuild the temple. The yeah. Muslims were just like, no way. It's a whole different narrative. What are the like potential implications of this being enacted? The Dome of the Rock is completely sacred to the Muslim faith. Yep. And if that's destroyed, you will not only have every Muslim nation, yeah. you'll have every Muslim in the world. Well, it'll be like the Battle of Armageddon, which talks about all the nations rising up against Israel. It's just, it's crazy that they literally have a sacrifice altar built. And they said and it'll happen. recently built? By the time this comes out, they could have already done it because they said it'll happen every, any day between now and Passover, which is in the end of April. So different sort of like versions, isn't it there, guys? People saying when they're going to be sacrificing that. Some saying that they've already done one, maybe perhaps on the sly. Um, I know that uh, Repo Man 64 um, sort of like has uh, maybe another few uh, ideas in and around that other sort of like Watchmen and uh, sort of like Watchmen looking at this as a possibility of when this will all happen, coinciding with all of this. Does that necessarily have a bearing upon us being here for that? I don't think it really matters whether they do that or not really in that sense. I'm not sure it has uh, uh, that sort of like bearing. They may 
do it today there's a big rumor that they may um or or whatever but there's obviously quite a lot of logistics that they have to comply with as well and i think it was if they were going to maybe do it it would be maybe perhaps today i'm not entirely sure i know repo man did some stuff on it uh Gigi also on blue heaven done some stuff and uh obviously has cheech uh tol and uh you know our uh our dear sort of like you know uh, uh got a minute and um, aaron as well as uh barry or so quite a lot of people have looked at it i'm not entirely sure when they're going to be doing that it's rumored that they're going to be maybe even looking at april next month as opposed to this particular month um but um, once they've got that then it can just be saved and stored and ready uh can it not be for whatever so it, it, it's not necessarily that sense of urgency other than the perhaps the sense of urgency around these red heifers perhaps having blemishes you know not having any yokes on not even being lent on in some instances and so that's obviously going to have a massive bearing and you think about the prophetic implications as a sort of like next clip uh sort of like i uh, will show uh sort of like it it, it find it really heart aching and, and heartbreaking to be totally honest with you this is still what they're doing and this is still the practice um and it is a little spit in the face of the lord is it not and just that you know when this realization comes upon them um you know no doubt you and i will be sort of like going to petra and you know going with loads of supplies and helping them all out because that's not going to be pretty or hot in a great time for them. So, uh, yeah, let's go back to the article, the guys, and uh, just finish up with sort of that. And then a clip that sort of like rounds this sort of like red heifer off. Here we go. Uh, it's saying here, however, opposition to recognize uh, opposition to these sacred ceremonies is evident. Even Hamas and the entire Muslim world recognize the significance of the red heifer and many seek to disrupt it. A significant portion believe that this sacrifice will bring with it the destruction of the Alaska Mosque and the retaking of the Temple Mount for the Jewish people, along with ushering in the Jal, whatever, the Islamic version of the Antichrist. This shows just how intense the spiritual warfare surrounding the fulfillment of biblical prophecy is in our modern world and i'm just wondering whether or not this could just be like another false flag event you've seen these projectiles uh that, that hamas have when they just have you know they're sort of like improvised rocket launches and you know rpgs or whatever and they're you know falling down because they've just not got any sort of like oomph in them and then they're falling into populated civilian areas and then cry havoc as what we're seeing wondering if one of those might absolutely uh, you know accidentally drop on whatever uh the alaska mosque and you know stir things up it's really difficult isn't it uh to sort of like have that you know piece about where this is all gonna go uh you know do go to our bubba and uh keeks uh, for more on, on israel when it comes to this uh, matter but other there's been other uh reports around the alaska mosque not being there everyone's anticipating this as a fact Continuing with the article, amid the chaos and uncertainty of the present age, Christians are called to heed Jesus's abomination, to watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. The urgency of these times demands vigilance and discernment rooted in prayer and scriptural truth. Being ignorant of the times we live in is simply not acceptable for a proclaiming Christian. As we are called to be the source of the earth, not the bystander. While the exact timeline of events it remains unknown, believers are urged to remain vigilant, prepared for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. As we witness the unfolding of biblical prophecy, we must not be complacent about, uh, but actively engage in spreading the gospel and building God's kingdom on earth. The significance of the red heifer in biblical prophecy cannot be understated. It serves as a tangible reminder of the unfolding of God's divine plan and the imminence of Christ's return. As we navigate these tumultuous times, may we remain steadfast in faith, watching and praying as we await the culmination of God's redemptive purposes in history. 
amen and that is a bride oh let's all get out of here okay i'm going to show you those uh, other clips now guys relating to the uh, red heifers give us a bit more sort of back in a secure undisclosed location in israel plans include moving them sometime soon to a visitor center in shiloh where the tabernacle of the lord once stood for nearly 400 years the book of numbers explains that ashes of the red heifer are used to purify priests for their service in the temple now the lord spoke to moses and aaron saying this is the ordinance of the law which the lord has commanded saying speak to the children of israel that they bring you a red heifer without blemish in which there is no defect and on which a yoke has never come you shall give it to eliezer the priest that he may take it outside the camp and it shall be slaughtered before him its offal shall be burned for the water of purification it is for purifying from sin these red heifers are now between one and a half to two years old to replicate the ceremony mentioned in the bible they need to be at least three years old and within that time span, they cannot have a blemish or anything that would disqualify them for the ceremony, even one white or black hair. According to those working on the project, the ceremony of the red heifer needs to be performed on the Mount of Olives and in a place that would have looked directly into where the temple stood. The land I'm standing on, bought 12 years ago, fits both of those standards. It's had to be exactly at the front of place that the priest that made this ceremony can see the holy of the holy place. Rabbi Yitzhak Mamo heads Yuvne so. Jerusalem, dedicated to the goal of rebuilding the third temple. He owns the land here on the Mount of Olives. And we hope that in a year and a half from today, we can make here in this area, the ceremony of the red heifer. That actually will be the first step to the temple. Mamo says the ceremony needs priests who have not been defiled by touching anything dead. The Temple Institute actually has uh, nine pure priests. They didn't born in hospital, okay, they born at home. Mm -hmm. Because they are priests, so anyway, they don't go to any cemetery and they are pure. Mm -hmm. And they are waiting. Yeah, right. So we have the priest, we have the red heifer, we have the land, and we have everything ready. We just need to wait another one and a half year. Byron Stinson of B'nai Israel, a group dedicated to building up biblical Israel, works with Rabbi Mamo and help find the red heifers in the U.S. He says these would be the first in 2,000 years and that the process toward a third Jewish temple began when the Jewish people started their return to the promised land from the four corners of the world, culminating with Israel becoming a nation. And then in 1948, in one day, they were reborn as a nation, and nobody said that could happen. And then you move forward, and Israel continues to be this strong nation, and all of these prophecies start fulfilling. There, there's so many now that have been fulfilled. It's just incredible, the evidence of, of what God is doing with uh, Jerusalem as the center of that. And the temple is the center of Jerusalem. And so how can it happen and how will it happen? I don't think anyone really knows for sure. Stinson believes the temple is meant to be a house of prayer for all nations. In the Bible, it says when Solomon built the first temple, he said this is a house of worship for all nations. That's what the temple is. And I think a lot of people think it's just the Jewish temple, but that's not true. It's for all the nations of the earth. Author Joel Rosenberg wrote about the third temple in his novel, The Copper Scroll and tell CBN News Jews have different views on the subject. Jews are divided actually between does the Messiah himself have to come and build the temple or do you build the temple and the Messiah, Messiah comes? So among those Jews, Israelis who care, that's actually, they're, they're divided into two different camps. I think most Israelis don't think about it, don't care, and actually would get a little worried of talk of a third temple because we already have enough trouble. Rosenberg also sees various points of view throughout the Christian community. Those who think about it and those who don't. Most Christians, I think, don't think about the third temple, uh, but those who do uh, believe that it will be built before Jesus returns for the second coming, not necessarily before the rapture, but definitely before the second uh, coming, and, uh, and that the Antichrist will take over that third temple during the tribulation and try to rule the world from there. Could it happen in our lifetime? That to me is intriguing. 
I, I think we don't know, uh, but there, but the, but there are some Jews who are really making, as you're as you're reporting on, preparations to get ready for that moment, and that's something to watch closely. Stinson says they plan to invite everyone to the red heifer ceremony that may take place in Passover 2024. Everything is in place down at the Red Heifers. As long as they stay pure, one of them stays pure, then we have everything in place, including the priests. Mamo says, according to the Jewish sage Maimonides, there were nine Red Heifers from Moses to the Second Temple. It's not his way to write, but suddenly he said the tent will make the Messiah. We know that the Messiah will make the tent. Maybe we have the privilege to be one of these people that uh, helped the Messiah to do it. So we're waiting. Massive altar already awaits where the heifers are to be burned. According to some believers, the ceremony needs to be performed right here on the Mount of Olives, looking directly into where the temple once stood. But something else now stands in its place. The Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque. There we go, guys. Uh, quite a lot for for uh, us to be sort of like considering in and around that. You heard it, heard it from these guys. They've got the priests ready. They've got all of them all set apart. They have all the trimmings in the, uh, you know, sort of like set up, don't they? The Temple Institute. And you have to go to their website, see how everything's already arrayed. And now they've got these heifers. Now they've got the altar. They've already dedicated the cornerstone. They've already sort of like picked out their lot and everything. And now there's this sort of like, you know, real putting the foot in the ground as well. Could this very well be the dangling power and the thing that seals the deal for Israel as they agree to a two-state solution would be included, no doubt, this uh, third temple being built. At what expense will that be done? Will it be done diplomatically? I, I can't imagine at this point that happening unless there's, there's some event, you know, sort of like in the mix. False flag, black swan, sabotage, who knows? All, all to force the issue, isn't it? Yeah, thank you, Paula, for putting in uh, Bubba's stuff there. It's really good. Uh, absolutely, Daniel. It would be great to hear hear that. Yeah, they're turning on their, their, their they're doing these like ghost particles and ghost hunting or whatever, smashing up a lot of stuff, turning things on. Absolutely astonishing what these guys are up to. Did some of that articles this morning. Keep an eye on what what it is that that you know doing opening portals no no less and so there you go guys just a few things for us to be sort of like looking at relating to the possibility of them maybe over the course of this weekend or maybe next month you know uh sacrificing these red heifers could that literally just blow up everything in the middle east and be the trigger that sends us home and seeing this sort of like insult that this is obviously to the lord and uh, how it is that they believe that this is going to atone them for their sins uh jesus has paid the price in full and it is finished i wanted to sort of like focus uh, and uh, keep our focus on the lord jesus uh, at this particular time as well with a particular music video just put together um around uh, the lord and uh, him literally having it all here you go here we go uh, this is like Jeremy Riddle, uh, the uh, singer, and I can't remember where this animation is from, but yeah. Jesus have my heart, my will, my soul. Jesus have my hopes, my dreams, my world. With joy I lay it down, with joy I cast my crowns. Jesus have it all. You I bring my praise, my lips, my song, a living sacrifice as one reborn. Your life is now mine, your will is what I want, Jesus have it all. Oh, Jesus have it all, Jesus have it all. To you belongs the glory, the praise of all. Jesus have it all, Jesus have it all. A blessing and honor, a majesty and all. 
Jesus had it all. Jesus have your church, your love, your pride, the joyful that you freely gave, your life, radiant and wood, washed and purified. Jesus have the soul. Jesus have your worth, your due, your son. Praise of every nation, tribe, and tongue. Let all that has been made glorify your name. Jesus have it all. Oh, Jesus have it all. Jesus have it all. To you belongs the glory, the praise of all. Jesus said it all, Jesus said it all, a blessing in all honor, a majesty in all, Jesus said it all, Jesus said it all, to you belongs the glory, the praise of all the world, oh, Jesus said it all, Jesus said Jesus have it all. Amen. Oof. Hi there, Moon Pie. Good to see you. Yeah, you're not wrong in that, Annie. Absolutely, Daniel. Absolutely standing in agreement. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the cross, all that he bore, all that he endured. Absolutely. He was thinking about, you know, that, you know, just nine o'clock in the morning to three in the afternoon, that six hours, the, the agony and ev absolutely everything, just the torture of that, the whole passion of it, the willingness, the obedience, the laying the life down, the choosing, the surrendering. The love, it's just like, oh, it is just overwhelming, really. Oh, Nikki, yeah. Um, Jeremy Riddle, he's really good. I really like Jeremy Riddle. It's not, he's not really in, in with a good crowd, but he's sort of like, he's a really good worship leader. And 
Um, I like what I like about him is he he's sort of like he'll start with a song and then he'll just like ditch it and just be really just spontaneous and just see where the Lord wants to go with it. And I just really like that in worship. I just I don't mind it when it's like a bit like boom boom boom, but sometimes we just want to just like just go with it during a chorus or something. And he's really good with that. And so he will start with one song <laughs> and it'll be like a 20 minute, 30 minute hour set. And it's really good. And so, yeah, I really like him, really sort of like enjoy his voice. Um, yeah. Uh, there was a, there was a, he did another one as well, sort of like nicked his voice over um, for uh, the the clip home, the animated one. He, he did that. He sung that about going home and being with the Lord and the wedding and everything. So uh just like yeah just really really nice yeah nice guy yeah donna you're not wrong a lot of people are talking around it uh you know the portals in and around everything you know she's uh you know the person who was there she's a wef you know lackey literal satan it's like everything all over her rituals everything her whole name in germantia means a whole lot go see our joseph for that but absolutely what they're doing with those portals and smashing those and those atoms. No doubt there's this two-way conversation, you know, with tech and hardware and software, given all of that, you know, and uh, the whispering of all of this, demons, no doubt. Um, yeah, very dodgy. You only have to go by the logo, don't you? 666 and CERN telling. Absolutely, yeah, Paula. Yeah, Annie, absolute unconditional love. Oh, bless you. Yeah. What he did, for, what he did. You know, there's no visuals that you could ever find that could do, 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 you know, I wouldn't say justice, but, you know, portray accurately the savagery of it. Mel Gism's sort of like passion is the closest because it would have been that bloody and it would have been that brutal. Uh, there's no two qualms about it, you know, Jesus would have been strong and built, you know, quirky, you know, he's, <laughs> Joseph was a, was a chippy and most of the chippies I know, they're quite stopped up, built, no doubt. And no doubt the Lord even probably knew also, did he not, you know, the actual carpenters by name or reputation at least who, who would make these crosses for the Romans, if not, you know, that, then, you know, there's songs, isn't it, around, uh, you know, the Lord, how that must have been so painful and heart aching for him to have created Golgotha and that particular area as beautiful as the other parts of that, you know, what would you do? Would you say, would you do that first or would you do that last? And the sort of like, you know, the significance of that throughout all of that time, knowing full well, that's going to be the place, uh, just, just, the, just, just the Lord's long suffering, holding on to that agony, knowing that that's what's going to be happening to your, to your son. Oof. Yeah, absolutely, Cher. None of us are of his absolute love, his forgiveness. That we can come to him and we can just say, Lord, I'm messed up. I'm, I'm a mess. And he comes in, he forgives and he heals and restores and guides us in everything. We're not worthy of that love. We're not worthy of the, the sacrifice. Absolutely not. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. No one can boast. We can't boast about it because it's not about us. It's about the Lord, isn't it? You know, and that's part of what we, you know, what we what we read, isn't it? You know, having being lights of the world and praising your father who is in heaven for seeing your good works. It's all about him. It's not about the individual. And so that that is a real sort of like solidifier. Yeah, we're not worthy of that. All that we have to look forward to, to be spared the tribulation and the judgments that are there, how the Lord has journeyed with us, how he's protected us, how he's so beautifully and safely brought us this far and everything that he has prepared for us his children and everything that he bestows on us we are so unworthy before i become a christian i was like i kind of want to understand a little bit why this sort of like demons had the real hump about this you know they were there first and all of a sudden in comes us they've got creation envy and they've all rebelled they were the ones that had all of the adoration and and whatnot there's a little there's no sympathy for them now in that sense um, whatsoever but it's a case of just seeing all these amazing things coming we're not worthy of the sacrifices that the lord has done for us at all let alone as he's been building and preparing our homes and our mansions for us and having everything in store 
uh, with the new heaven and the new earth and the millennial reign and the beamer sea. What a, what an absolute privilege. And it's and it's there for people to be taking on board now, to be walking in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ now and calling on his name. Um, whew, absolutely so not worthy. And then there's that song, isn't it? Worthy of it all. Absolutely. Just whew, all about you throwing down your crowns. <laughs> Yeah, like any one of us would ever take them seriously, you know, and it's like Lord face planting it before before him. Cannot wait. Ah, oh, it's gonna be beautiful. No, Daniel, we have prayers. A lot, a lot of uh yeah. No idea what's on the route. People go around their business and I go, that's why I find it really down and discouraging. When you go around to towns and you go around to cities. And you're just seeing people going about your business and you sort of like and you think you've got you've got no idea have you and 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 the sadness of it or how are the, how are they going to be able to cope these guys are not not going to have a scooby-doo they've got no idea and and all of the information is all there available and they're just not discerning of it and um, that's heartbreaking isn't it especially when you've got people in your own household absolutely age of grace all glory to jesus christ our great god and savior our rock and foundation all of that glory absolutely keep that up um goes to the lord isn't it how he's brought us how he's journeyed how we've all come here you know it's not by coincidence of god incidents that we're all here journeying our way to the finishing line reporting and talking about stuff having fellowship you know all of this sort of stuff it's 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 all for the lord isn't it it's for him you know that's the whole point is like let the watchmen let the watch women let those that are in those you know big high profiling places decrease and let the Lord increase. We need to be magnifying him, his name, his righteous and holy name, which is why first thing before we end up sort of like, sort of like you know, getting get grossed out by the content of what the world and how everything is happening. It's really important that we go straight to the holy word of God first and foremost. And we hear what the Lord's got to say about stuff and the gospel message and to be keeping our focus and attention on him because that is what he wants us to be doing in that storm. And we want to be giving him the glory. And we want to be saying, Lord, you are holy. You are, you are awesome. And we love you. And we can't wait for you to come. And Lord, we're sorry that this earth doesn't quite get you. And Lord, they're going to get you when you sound the trumpet and cry of command. But Lord, they, they, don't, they don't understand. And that's sort of just like, oh, come on. Lord, we want to give you that glory. We want to give you that praise. We want to be leading people to you, not trying to gravitate people to us or here, but, but to the Lord. And hopefully they get to experience some fellowship here as well. But yes, all glory to the Lord and to Father God for giving us his word, for calling it all out way in advance. And now we're seeing the fulfillment of this in so many different aspects are we not and what how blessed we are to be the witnesses of that as we were discussing yesterday around you know closing up daniel being told to close up and and not report on that and this is what we are now doing in a sense you know sort of like taking that relay leg on board and running with it hopefully to the end or at least until the two witnesses come and rock up and then that's it and then i think the lord's going to be the one keeping you know overwatch and watch and so yeah we need to be giving the lord the glory for that what he's also doing but also the praise and you know the worship for all that's being held back the, the holy spirit restraining this evil you know crikey we could have had a, another pandemic we could have had another sort of like you know issue with another war or nukes going all flying off um, you know, the Lord is really holding back some of this because that's all going to be there as well. And so absolutely our focus needs to be on him in material of like where you stand theologically on one thing or another. The focal point has to be the Lord Jesus. And when we're in that storm, we just got to keep our eyes on and fixated on. And it's really sort of like absolutely right. All of that goes to him and anything outside of that is on us. And that's our bad. Yeah, absolutely, Moon Pie, sorry. 
that is heavy on the heart when I think about what Jesus did for us. Yeah, you know, they used to have like, you know, the, the leather straps and then they used to have balls of iron and things. And then at the end of that, they would have spikes and it would literally take chunks out of your flesh. Crikey, you know, just, it, you know, you see like some of the other sort of like forms of, of, of punishment as well. You know, one of the worst ones really is like the blood eagle that the Vikings used to do. You know, that's just like savage and brutal, but that's just as awful as well. And, you know, ordinarily not being able to sort of like make it to Golgotha wouldn't have been the case and being surprised as Pontius Pilate was that Jesus had died as well. The asphyxiation as your lungs collapse as you can't do that having to step up onto, you know, the nails, you know, in order to gather, a, 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 you know, a breath and bleeding out in that sense as well. Just unbelie unbelievable, the thorns in the head as well. That's what's so beautiful about the little story around the robin, isn't it? You know, the bird and, you know, the, the, the rumours that it's got its sort of, uh, you know, sort of like red chest because it was flying over, you know, Calvary and saw, saw, you know, saw the Lord and was trying to get the, the sort of like crown of thorns off its, off his head. And that's why it was all cut up or whatever. And just seeing, do you know what I mean? Just seeing so many of those sort of things as well. The heaviness is there for, for each of us in terms of like gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for that. Can you imagine, you know, if it was a case of, right, you now have to, in heaven, be the one to walk through everything the lord did so like maybe like some imagine some hologram could you just imagine the awfulness of that of literally being there as as in like real time no one can see you but you know like star trekky style and and actually going through that and at the end and and the lord looking at you in the eye because you were the only one there as they were doing all of that and could you you oh my goodness you wouldn't know what to do with yourself would you that's just like thank you lord for that and then and then the character and the heart of the lord to turn around even after all of that and say lord they haven't got scooby do have they forgive them do you know what i mean just 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 that and then ultimately saving someone as well how beautiful that was you know so in in all of this ugliness the heaviness is there could we look at that i don't have a problem with like graphic stuff at all but there are some things that are so close because every drop spill that's 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 the lord jesus precious blood that's his life force spill and poured out for us you know just oh my goodness it's all done it's all finished and people want to go about works and people want to be going around the law and they want to be going down that particular road unbelievable absolutely annie the age of grace, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you are saved through faith. Absolutely. Nothing to do with us. All has to do with what the Lord has done for us. It is finished. Done. Yeah, absolutely. So it is absolutely the most amazing week in history. And what does the world want to go and do about it? it? Wants to go flogging friggin' ice, you know, sort of like Easter eggs and chocolate and commercialize it all as they always do, straight after Christmas. Come out the Easter eggs and just like Easter bunny, the whole stupid thing, and take away that whole whole stuff, isn't it? Get all the days wrong when it's all put together anyway. Crikey. And it is, you know, the Lord Jesus conquers death, rises. Oh, gloriously. Hi there, Wendy. God bless you. Good to see you. Yeah, absolutely. So grateful and undeserving. Absolutely. What's that going to be like? You know, so I go to the Lord and, and just, I can almost hear it now, can't you? You know, sort of going up to being in being at the beam of seat and just saying, Lord, just 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 thank you for dying for me. And just how crap that sounds. And then Jesus just turn around and say, You're welcome. Just just oh my goodness. You know, you're never you're never you quirky, 
How can we ever sometimes have any insecurity with God when it comes to all that he has expressed and he's laying down the life for us? How, how can we ever go back? We do, don't we? But absolutely, the gratitude and the undeserving nature of it. Absolutely, pray, Lord, come. Come get us. Thank you, Paula. Yeah, there's uh, about 30 on our calls over there this morning. Those clips, all guys, the Jesus have it all from... Uh, Jeremy Riddle and the other bits and bobs and everything will all be in the Telegram uh, channel afterwards. Yeah, Sylvia's there. Yeah, difficult. Our Lord was brutally killed by his choice for our salvation. They are mocking his sacrifice with the red heifer. Absolutely. It's heartbreaking. Uh, blinded by the darkness, it makes me sick. And, and you just know what's going to happen to these guys because they're going to be sincerely gutted, aren't they, when, when the penny drops? absolutely going to be like ripping robes and everything aren't they and this is the thing that really moved me personally towards the lord was his willingness to lay down his life you know you seem sort of oh and i just been able to sort of like slap his fingers and say that's it i'm done commander commander legion just to end of right let's just know it to it right here right now i'm done with this gig and just didn't and willfully and it's pictured in the passion movie isn't it is when you know jesus like slides off the sort of like cross for some reason and and you can just see him literally choosing to actually get on to his execution table you know in a sense uh absolutely yeah jesus did it all and how can we not give him anything less like as that song we're seeing jesus, jesus have it all at all not sure what it's worth i don't know how it is Lord, but it's there it's a mess it's yours use it if you can <laughs> all the best for that you know oh oh we love you lord we do we do and it ain't just because of like oh this is just like you know the season just to get a little bit more you know in adoration so all day every day oh absolutely moon pie absolutely I love Jesus so much and I'm going to cry joyful tears when I see him. Yeah, man, I, tell, I, I don't, I, it's going to take me a long time to even sort of like look him in the eye, to be fair. I'm just going to be face down in the dirt looking for a place to hide. In all truth, he will have to command me to, you know, tell me to stand up and then he will have to command me to let him go. <laughs> That'll be like that, no doubt. Yeah, Wendy's saying here, yeah. Yeah, there's just so much of it. And it's sort of so annoying. The enemy's just confused it. So many different people and also different channels having different understandings of it. God showing them different things. It's just like, oh, come on. It's purposeful, isn't it? Absolutely. I don't, absolutely. None of, none of, none of the above. We celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah, I just want to lay my, abs, Absolutely. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't personally understand. And, and that's, and that's, that's quite bold and I'm bold. So I, so ordinarily the thought of just like being done with protocol, not really understanding the gravity of the situation, but just sort of like wide elbowed, legging it in, running full pelt into the law. I don't think I, I know. I'm going to be sort of like, so I know I'm, I, come on, you're standing in glory, you're standing in, come on. And then you, and then you, and then you, and then you're there with him, come on. What's that going to be like? And all this glory and all this love and everything, it's going to be over. I'm not going to know what to do with myself. I'm really not going to know what to do with myself. I'm just going to be like, Poof. that's it, you know. Could you please fix my face, Lord? Because I just cracked it as I just fell to my knees. Absolutely. You know, and what a joy for us to be voluntarily doing this because we love him. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every tongue, every knee. And we get to do it because we love him. Ah. Oh. 
face planting. Come on. Can imagine all of us. Just like, oof. It's going to be awesome. All right, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't really matter, isn't it? You know, some people they it's just walking by faith and sight, isn't it? It's a big it's, it's a big difference. We we don't do that. We know the Lord put that on our hearts. We know that the Lord's stirring us. He's speaking to us in different ways, encouraging us to continue, encouraging us that He's coming and we're seeing different signs, we're seeing different themes. The Lord seems to be wonderfully, beautifully revealing to so many different channels and different parts of his family, his children what's happily happening so that we're in the know and we're keeping an eye on and we're ready are oh, we not our, our, but you know we don't take anything with us but everything's done everything should be all sorted out there should be nothing left undone left behind notes everything's sorted out we are good to go lord and we're just going to use whatever time that we've got left or you've got to be using that in your in your vineyards however fleeting however like it feels like pushing water uphill and you're peeing in the wind at times, but to still persist because there's still seeds and there's still, you know, maybe visuals or memes or verses or something during the tribulation that they get a hold of and has a big bearing on where it is that they end up. Yeah, absolutely. It's all like that. Hate it. Easter Bunny and Santa. I tell you what, I'd love to just smipe them out seriously once and for all ah oh, awful yeah absolutely annie oh we love you nikki bless you it's great to have some fellowship and some time with each other it's really awesome Oh, you guys are networking. That's quality. Yeah, there's not many, not many over here. You're standing up and just speaking it out, and people are just ignorant because of the times. Absolutely ignorant. They're just not even wanting to discuss it. All playing it safe from the pulpit. Not warning of the times. Not speaking out about sin. Not speaking out about hell. Not speaking about repentance and you know, metanoia. You know, unbelief to belief. All that kind of stuff. Not speaking out about the matters that really, you know, people really need to hear. Just want to talk about another sort of like, you know, parable that's been done a thousand million times in a different, a different way just to sort of rack up the number for converts and that's and that's what it's all all about really I have nothing to do with real discipleship when it comes to new converts or anything like that or pastoring them at all teaching them and feeding them correctly as the bible says that they should do not even venturing anywhere near revelation let alone standing up during covid embarrassment sorry the church is an embarrassment Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it will be like, you know, us, us sort of like, you know, sharing our journeys to there and get them to know. And it's going to be beautiful having, you know, this 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 for us our generation we're going to know every generation gets to know each other because they're a part of it and this is going to be us and this is the final generation generation that will not pass and how beautiful it is that we get to see and report on all of this this is our bragging right you know with all the festivals and everything else that's also happening as we've as we've been saying relating to that you know the rapture is also no doubt going to be celebrated and have a festival of its own for eternity as well and we get to be the ones in that particular part. We weren't around in the tabernacle wildernesses and all of the other sort of stuffs. But this is us. This is ours, you know. And so come, Lord, come on. If not, if not Sunday, can you not do it on like, you know, Pentecost or Ascension Day or something? Or, you know, come on. We hope, we hope. Oh, 
Ficar legal, o time Mike Wack, você vai lá. Hey, I'll be always here. God bless you, my friends. I'm sorry, no notification. Yay, happy resurrection day. No, you're not alone there, Wendy. No, not at all. I think it's, I think it's right. I mean, you know, for us, it's just like we understand the significance of, you know, the Passover. We understand the significance of, like, you know, the, the blood on the lentils. We understand the significance of death passing over. We understand all of that. For us, we can we can sort of like have that as something that we could celebrate as well. But yeah, absolutely. Bless you guys. Oh, I'm sorry you don't get notifications. This is just YouTube doing what he's doing. It's unbelievable what he does. This is what everything is like 28 in the chat now, and it'll give us like four views afterwards. It's pathetic. It's just like just stop it. It's just you're just embarrassing yourself, really. Yeah, and you're right. You know, for some, for some, you know, you know. I think JD Farag's is a pastor for some people, isn't it? And others get fellowship where they where they can and 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 have that. And that's why it's really important. I think when, you know, when there is that fellowship, that the content of everything needs to be very much geared around the Lord. In that sense, having Scripture, having that, having the Gospel, having that, having a few other things in there, which is why we're trying to mix it up as we are. Not that we're trying to replicate church but we we just got fellowship and we're having community and we have two or more gathered in his name the lord is with us and i really do believe that and um, we believe that he sends who he will and so absolutely right to protect your walk if you're not going to a place perhaps where you're being fed you need to find places where you are sadly because of the state of the world now that's even getting far and few between and i find it i find it really difficult to be in a church where they weren't talking around the end times or they weren't speaking out about some of these things that were really important to me because they're really really important that's because i'm a part of the body of christ in this way and so for others they might have a different outreach or an outlook and that's fine but for me i need that being met and i need that being spoken about and i want the teaching on it i want that as part of my journey because where we are heading for me personally is the most important thing i mean we don't go anywhere do we as we know where we're going, a step forward in a car, on a bus, on a plane, whatever. We don't know. And so we all like that. But sadly, you don't have it. And you have to protect your walk. It's not going to be the fellowship and the worship that we're going to have in heaven. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Oh, you guys are all awesome. Uh, thank you, Bill, for putting that up. Yeah, these clips will be on there a little bit later. Okay, then, guys, I'll leave us here. Um, yeah, so it was really good for us to have a look at Psalm 150. And uh, we'll put that over as well, just looking at praising the Lord. Uh, he is worthy of our praise. Uh, praise him in everything that you have in symbol, musician, instrument or otherwise in everything that you do everything that has breath praise the lord and we were saying around every knee bowing as well Ev let everything that has breath praise the lord jesus over everything that he has done everything that he is doing uh, as well and so i'll put the article in relation to the red heifers and the return of the lord jesus got some clips saying was this particularly the reason why Hamas did uh, the attack? I don't think so personally. I think it was to, you know, push for the two-state solution. But the third temple, the red heifers, the prophecy, and these guys all being here after all this time, could it be the fuse that ignites things? The Alaska Mosque kind of stands in the way there, but with all the other fractions and all the other skirmishes going off as well, it wouldn't be a, a too stretch of our imagination to have something drop on that bad boy and off. There you go, false flag, or uh, it all kicks off and stirs off and our departure. And then there was the music video, which is what was really important around this 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 time for us is our focus 
on the Lord Jesus Christ, the finished work of, of the cross, his death, burial and resurrection. Uh, and uh, that's what we've been focusing on in the uh, music video around having it all rolled, our gratitude, our our heartfelt thanks of what he has done. And consequently, our response to him is, Lord, have, have everything. Here it is, <laughs> you know, just emptied out our pockets, if you will, and just saying, that's all I've got, Lord, it's there, it's yours, um, because you are you are everything to us, and we love the Lord Jesus here. Yeah? And so really good to have that. I just want to end with a gospel message now. If you're not walking in a relationship with the Lord Jesus, really encourage you to uh, listen to this sort of like clip and then just go for a walk and spend some time and just invite him to come and sit and meet with you. And he will sit and meet with you and take those steps towards you and begin that relationship. But before that sort of like happens, there's a few things um, to sort of like done, which is sort of like acknowledging a few things in self. Um, but here we go, the gospel message. To begin with, so I'm not going to have that man. My bad. God created everything in the universe, including you. You see, God loves you so much and wants to have a friendship with you. But there's a problem. We've all sinned. That means we've all done something wrong, every single one of us. And that sin separates us from God. But there's good news. You and I don't have to be separated anymore. Because of God's great love for us, He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross and come back to life for us so that we can be made right with Him. All we have to do is choose to make Jesus the leader of our life. How? It's as easy as A, B, C. A. Admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B. Believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C. Confess. Confess to others that Jesus is the leader of your life and your best friend. Choose to make Jesus the leader of your life. Get to know Him and how much He loves you and make the choice to love Him back. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hey, our Baba. Yeah, please do go to our Baba um, over on his Telegram channel and on his YouTube channel as well, relating to more updates uh, on the Red Heifers and uh, Israel. You can find Bro Keegs over there as well at Keegs7. And Keegs' website is www.rapturecountdown.com. God, you sound like a salesman, man. It's not good. It's not my gig, man. Yeah, we love our Baba. Show up with some love. Hi there, Jess. Bless you. Good to have you with us. Uh, good to have you guys here. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, then. Okay, there, guys. God bless you. Thank you for the pleasure of your company. I'll put those clips in the telegram afterwards and uh, you can have that. But um, hoping you have a blessed rest of your day, whatever it is that you end up doing. And uh, we will touch base again uh, tomorrow, guys. So uh, in and around, hopefully, at uh, the same time as well. See what the Lord is for us to be having a look at. But bless you. Thank you to our mods for keeping this a safe space and everything that you guys do and the pleasure of your company. And uh, we'll touch base soon. All right now. Bye-bye.